All right. So I picked this game because he said old. Why not pick it because he said old? Rumor has it he has a 10 game series coming up. So why wouldn't we take a look and see how he's doing lately? It makes perfect sense. Because one thing you're noticing uh, in Listo's play lately is just this crazy aggression. I guess he's really trying to make sure he's in uh, tip top shape while he enters his 10 game match series. So yeah, we see even uh, more aggression than usual from his games lately. But will we see that here or has he calmed down a bit? That's the question you can ask yourself. That I'm reviewing it kind of gives you the answer, but okay, it's a fun game. We start off opening normally as we always do in almost every game that I go over. So, okay, that's cool. White opens up fairly normally as well. Black takes corner, white takes corner, and now we have choices here. We can enclose for orthodox opening, which is perfectly fine. We can approach low or high onto the 3-4. Hello, Kobe. The only moves we really wouldn't expect to see our approaches onto the upper left uh, cornerstone because it's 4-4, not as interesting as a 3-4 stone for that very reason. You can easier, more easily make territory with 3-4 than 4-4, so it's usually prioritized. We have our own 3-4 stone, kind of wonder something about it considering it's facing our opponent. Bunch of reasons like that. Makes top of the board most uninteresting right now. Okay, he approaches low. And now anyone who's been studying Go lately uh, is going to be unsurprised to find white ignoring and approaching black as well. Because this is sort of an opening that's uh, been going around lately. Not really playing out a Jiseki and then going somewhere else and playing out a Jiseki there. It's usually, well, you approach me, that's, that's kind of aggressive, that's cool. I'm going to respond with the exact same aggression and approach you as well. And now you have to find out how to make all these moves work together. So, alright, completely normal, completely normal here. Uh, and Izumi8 says M4. You would not be incorrect with that idea. I would expect to see maybe a move, maybe not M4. M4 is... Or wait, sorry. M4... A mm, little bit of an unusual pin track, pin sorry. I almost never actually see that one in of itself. I expect to see L3 a little bit farther away. Because the T-space extension prevents white from making a two-space extension. You can only make a one there if we get that, which is kind of nice. Kind of cramps up white a bit as a follow-up. Here we can see a two-space, still a two-space involved for white, so maybe our group gets kind of uh, pressured if we're not careful on how this plays out. That could be an issue. Uh, or we put a lot of pressure on white stone. Usually either or. Oddly enough, M3 Oh, I'm sorry, you said M4. I'm retarded. Well, let's pretend you said M3 for a second. M3, one of the ones I usually don't see for that reason. It wasn't suggested, but oh well. Uh, meanwhile, so I don't look like a total fool, luckily enough, M4 wasn't picked either. You're close, though. White pincers, or black pincers, uh, far away high. Ah, uh, M4, though, is actually something... Do I want to go over this now? Okay, I think simply because I have a series of videos that I'm making right now that you don't know about, and one of the videos features M4, I don't really want to go into it again right now. Uh, suffice it to say, it's a good pick. It puts pressure on the stone. Definitely playable. But yeah, I, I'm waiting to see if I actually like to see how this series is turning out before I upload anything. Uh, anyway, moving along. Uh, okay, lots of very, very, very light pressure being applied to P3. P3 doesn't have to respond. Plenty of room here. We can even see, boop, boop, we can select a base. 
we can see we can do that. We see we have plenty of room down here to do something. Lots of room to do whatever we want. And white is crazy aggressive. White says, okay, I placed a cornerstone, you approached me. I ignored you to approach you. Okay. When I approached, you pitzered me. So now I'm going to ignore you again to change direction. This is one of the games to give you headaches. Because you have no idea how you want to even begin to try to profit off of this. It's like, well, do we answer this as well? Do we just keep following our opponent and answering any move that he makes? Is that, is that the plan here? Is that a good idea? Do we follow up something? If so, what? I mean, we can follow up here. We can follow up there. We can follow up like this. We can ignore him as well and approach a stone. I mean, there's just so many options here, and it's hard to say which ones are good and which ones are bad. I mean, you can play in just about anything here, really. So what do we play? What do we play? Black keeps it simple. I have a stone. That is pincer one of yours. I will keep you out of my corner and I will kick you. If you extend, I can keep you separated fairly easily. And we will go from there. Okay. A plan has begun. White says I'm going to ignore you and approach. Get my base before I do anything else. And black responds by approaching the corner. So now we have a delightfully complicated game where we have absolutely no idea where the next move is going to come from. It could pincer the left, it could be on the bottom, it could be reapproaching the top. No, again, no clue. This is just a headache for both players. So when, usually when we see games like this, we try to figure out how can they keep things um, simple. Okay, I guess technically you can't really ignore anything at this point unless you play Tengen. If you played Tengen, then you'd be ignoring everything that occurred previously. But short of that, not gonna happen, huh? All right, so white says, I like my corner, I keep it. Tiger Weichi says that uh, black seems to be developing faster than white, and yeah, that's true. Black stones are uh, accomplishing, especially with the uh, last approach at C14. We can see that maybe black's trying to get the left-hand side. Uh, we've got potential on the bottom, given that this uh, little stone is weak. <clears throat> so interesting to see what white plans to do with all of these stones. For now, black approaches. Because a move like this would be too slow. Nobody here would want to play this, right? This is more of a uh, handicap kind of dealio. Because we're still open to invasions. We didn't answer anything on the bottom, so the stone can still be kind of approached for a follow-up. Instead, bottom is potentially where white can cause trouble, so we're going to put pressure on him, right? Because if we do something like this, one thing we would not want to have happen is have this stone come back to life and isolate uh, L4. That's potentially something that white could do. Okay, now it no longer is. So here we go, changing, we're putting pressure on the group. White does not want to be surrounded, so he comes out. Black says, that's great, I would like the bottom. Again, comes out quickly, putting pressure on the stone. But again, Black says, hey, that works good for me too. White moves to settle. Black invests in the left-hand side. White gets to get some shape. 
and black protect what's important. So pretty good results all around. And by all around, I mean all around for black. The left, getting pretty safe right now. The bottom can still be attacked. This is an, over, an, ex, an overextension. Usually when we have two stone wall, we don't want to extend like five spaces. That, that's a bit much. So not quite in perfect position, but doing okay. And then white does something that I don't know what to think about. I just flat out am not sure. White does this. What do you guys think about this? Because when I think about reapproach, I think about standard approaches. I'm not even certain I've ever seen this occur in my game. Right? I don't think I've ever seen a double approach from two spaces away. That's, that's so weird. Ah, Oli 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 has a very good point. Does not wish to be pincered. Okay, okay. I can definitely see that that could be a one of the reasons. But it's definitely a troubling move, I would think, for black. Unless there's like a very standard sequence here that I have just never come across. I will immediately grant that could be possible. Uh, but yeah, I would seriously be uh, thinking about this. Does anyone have any idea how to respond? How do you respond? Because, I mean, our responses are what? Be like, uh, scared YOLO into corner, and don't let ourselves be attacked, which seems way too submissive and passive, and we're not going to do that, probably. We can say we're going to come out, but this we're not really being threatened to stay in anyway. That seems really, really slow too, because the right is fine, and then the left is just going to back off. So the only real options seem to be lean, or lean, or the attachments which just seem bad, right? Or K16. Hmm. K16 just pincered anyway, huh? I don't know if I like the pincered anyway. Pincered anyway says it really can't get a base. Can get a base at what h seventeen? Hmm. I don't know. I think I'd probably I'd be tempted to go into the three three if you do that. Well, the attachments are gonna make white strong, right? And we're kind of trying to figure out how best to take advantage of this position. Black says, I lean against what's strong. White says, giggles. Takes perfect base. And then Black just says, forget it, I'm taking my profit elsewhere. And I can completely understand this. Like, are we in trouble anymore? I, I don't know, we're, we're out, right? Black is kind of out now. We still have no idea how we're profiting from this. There's no real easy way to do so with white being strong on the right hand side. The top is just a headache to consider how we can, we, can, we have to kill if we're trying to profit up there or just prevent white from profiting. So I, that makes sense, just forget it. We're, we're no longer in trouble. Let's just take solid points elsewhere. It makes perfect sense. So I like that. This seemed like a headache to me, but he's just, decided, all right, I'm gonna lean against you. You didn't respond to hurt my stone. I'm out, forget it. Let's just follow up and get points. I like breaking that down and simplifying it. Now here's where something really insane comes along. White jumps out, and this is where I mention again that uh, Isidol has been playing really, really aggressively because we can see what's going on here, right? White saying, I'm going to push and surround this group now, because I'm, I'm coming out. And if I push and you respond, 
then, you know, White can continue threatening to surround and build up top. Okay, we, we see what's going on. We see what's going on. And Black's response... is just to say, do it. If you push up, I can drop down. It's a very, very bold play. I mean, the potential profit here for black is immense. If he gets to cut off this stone with all of the, all of the influence on the bottom, all that strength, this will immediately be in a pretty good position. But how damaged is his group going to get if he does that? What do you think? Is White going to split or is White going to defend? What do you think White's going to do? Mr. Monday and Nizumi both say split. <laughs> Tanuki play elsewhere. I like that idea too. It's like, ah, uh, no. Okay, Tagaroichi says we're going to uh, defend, but no, he decides to split. And white has provoked black to fight. White says I cut you, black says no you don't. No, he defends. Okay. Little bit stronger for white on both sides. Black still has no shape. Not really. Does Lucente. So the question now is how is black going to defend himself? How is he going to get Sente? What do you think? Do we connect up? Do we jump down? Do we go back into the corner? Do we try to make some weird demented table shape thingy? What do you think we ought to do here? I would drop, which means that's not what Isidol is going to do. Don't let N17 group live easily. Ooh, Nazumi, are you suggesting a pincer here? Okay. That is very aggressive indeed. So we got some seriously hyper aggressive uh, ideas from uh, Nizumi. Black just says, I'm going to make myself not be surrounded. The trouble with pincering this is that you know it's going to happen. You know that any kind of jump, any kind of turn, is sente for white. Because you can't let yourself be surrounded. And the trouble with that is that it really, uh, really makes the idea of pincering here kind of difficult. I mean, what if you pincer and they just attack it? If this gets stronger, you're going to be surrounded anyway kind of difficult to do, kind of difficult to do. He's going to get out with a small knight, can't that be cut, so says Mr. Monday. Um, yeah, okay, that can be kind of cut, that can be cut. He decides to go for, you know, just the uh, six line territory, but he could I guess you could try to cut it. I guess we're gonna see this then. That's kind of risky. We're still not sure where this stuff is going yet. I think black would want this, ideally. Because with all that strength, don't you want a weak group in the middle? And you don't want to see this happen, right? because then the top's going to be invaded. I mean, if we're not careful now, 
then yeah, pincers are not going to be uh, very friendly. And if we don't keep going out, even a turn here builds up the left-hand side. Oh man, cutting here is such a hard decision to make. Because you can just see all the different ways black can profit from it, right? It's like, well, if he gets a wall here, the left gets built. And go away. If uh, he gets a wall here, the bottom gets built. So, uh, that's, that's a tough one to make. That's a tough call to make. But all right, jumps out. Black says, that's enough out of that. I'm going to reduce you. And white says, but but I shoulder hit. I'm gonna I'm gonna surround you. Goes to make some uh, eye shapes in uh, the corner. Fixes his position. All right. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Are we completely alive there? If we push through and do that, it looks like we're in pretty good shape if he attaches. Okay, we can make some eyes in the corner. We can make some eyes in the corner. So white goes back and kicks. E14. E14 can do that, but it wasn't his main it wasn't his main objective. His main objective was just to prevent something like Uh, go away. Something like this from occurring, where he just gets the sixth line territory for free. This, three three potential and reduction, two things at once. Very good move. All right, so we are now defending a little bit against the three three, and still trying to take all that sixth line territory. That territorially goodness. Uh, Gobaduk points out something interesting, though. I liked my point, but white, I guess, uh, this can work. Can jump out here. To protect as well. And then I guess we just cut here and build up the bottom. Again, it's pretty much the same thing. Oh. Yeah. So again, same thing. If we try to push at this, there's just too many ways that uh, black can build up, either the left or the bottom. All right, so got a cap. I love these kind of moves. I always say it all the time. Developing is really, really great. But part of the developing is you're telling your opponent where they can get free moves. White's trying to get on the top. And Black's just inviting the defense of it. It's like, go ahead. I, I want the center. I have much I can build. So defend yourself. White defense, because that is sixth line. That's very healthy. Sente poke. Sente poke. And then continue along his merry way. Defends himself. Keeps poking. And last but not least defends his corner. Now he's completely fine and alive on the uh, with that particular group. White says, you're not going to attack me. I'm going to extend, make myself nice and alive as well. And again, these little moves, like this one. It's so tempting to say, I'm going to connect now and try and build up a large area. Or I'm going to try and 
maybe do something here and build up a large area. But Black's first asking himself where he's getting those sente points. And this is a pretty good one. His white's corner's not 100% uh, yet, right? So this makes sense. So all right, that's large. White has to do something. He comes out. Black's find the Hane. Black responds. And by that I mean he doesn't. I killed the tree. Oh no. So sad. Defends. 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 Sometimes they get through the tree, and it's fine. Sometimes not. This, this unfortunately is one of the knots. All right, so you got through that. The group now is alive. It doesn't make any sense to keep poking at it. So now they go back and look for profit. And another crazy exchange is coming up. Well, not, I can't really call it an exchange, but you'll see. He's going after all the influence. He's poking around, trying to steal off all the ways that he can possibly use to get Aji to reduce him. And White says, this is too large. I have to reduce this. Okay. Black says, I'm not going to let you reduce me anymore. Good luck trying to live. Gonna make some eye shape. And then escape. Lean on the stone. If it responds, we can keep getting out. But black decides to go and rob the base. Still trying to come out. And black is still poking at shape. Playing very, very severe moves against this. Tries to remain connected. Keeps poking at all the things. Trying to escape. We immediately have profit. If there's some way to connect here, that's okay. We are profiting here. Um, and I think I literally just answered your question. Uh, why O5? O5 is there, okay. Instead of N5. N5 was there. Okay. Uh, this one then. Why not? Wait, what? Oh, 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 okay. This one. Uh, trouble with this, a couple of things. One, you haven't given yourself any way to live yet, and you're being attacked very, very severely. So you're just kind of inviting white to, or black to keep pushing your shape into this random void of nothingness where nothing will survive. So it's uh, back to the drawing board all over again. Have to figure out where we're shape our shape is coming from. And trying to get something going here. At least this way we can damage the right hand stone. So we have a plan going. So, all right. Plan we have going. Nice connection. Nope, doesn't I don't think he does need that much there are white connects. Getting them forcing moves. Getting them forcing moves. Trying to get them forcing moves. Threatening a connection. White said uh, black says go ahead and connect. I have more than enough. I need nothing else. So, okay, white connects. Threatens to anyway. It's a small knight, can be cut. But black doesn't cut. He's going to take his profit. Why not? Gets himself some influence. Black says, nope, I'm taking some more for myself. Pushes through. Tries to anyway. Completely fine in the corner. Tries to reduce. And once again, 
what it tries to reduce. Because the area that is being developed is so large. And he's doing it in a way that there's there's no real forcing moves here. I mean, there's this, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, maybe something kind of connection over here? Oh, it's real tenuous, though. Real tenuous. We'll have to see if this actually gets to live or not. Black says, all right, the only way for that to live is to connect up to the left, which I don't think you can do. The top, that's where your connection's coming from. So I'm going to cut that off right now. Aji Aji. And try and connect. Very deep invasion there, Mooncrest. Very true. Kills half stone. Prefer hopefully anyway. Hopefully. Tries to ensure he's nicely connected. Tries to defend Incente. But Black is very good at seeing where the profit's coming from. So he actually allows the left hand side to be killed. Because he can still cut here. Why D9? D9. Why this? No. Why that? That was a long time ago. He's trying to get, he was trying to get this move out of his opponent. Because we can see here that there's no good response, right? Everything gets saved. As long as this works. If he responds, we're fine. Black said no. White says yes. Black says no. And yet white again says yes. Black cuts off. He's trying to profit in exchange for left hand side. Take obvious. Try to descend, also obvious. So I'm just going to cut off. The Atari is free. The Atari is free. Can't really do much else. We have, uh, we're good one liberty. Nothing's going to matter there, really. So we take profit on the left hand side. So that's good. What white profited on the left? Those uh, stones over there at uh, B5 uh, five are, they're dead. But the question is, are C14 stones dead? Are, are, is, that, is that like a must right now? Do we need more stones over there in order to, uh, you know, not die? Or are they good as is? Because that is such an important question right now. That is such an important question that we need answers to. To live comfortably, probably one more stone. Oli 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 says you can go deeper in the corner, and that is important. The fact that C17 still exists, probably fine. Probably fine. It looks like maybe we're going to have Mii to live. I mean, we've got this. We've got this. Do we really need another move in order to live? 
Black says, no, absolutely not. I'm going to cut you off and kill you on huge scale. All right, force moves against black. Sure, sure, sure. Looking for that Aji. Looking for more of that Aji. Maybe we can pressure these four stones here. Black says go for it. White, black says nothing you can do. His cutting point is protected now. It's the only thing that he had going for him. So white tries to cut. There are four Seamuth, but there's nothing that we can do there. Extends. Make certain he's completely connected and fine and alive. And at that point, there's nothing really that white can do. So he resigns. He got the profit, the profit on the left hand side, but it wasn't enough. The middle just got cut off and killed as a result made black extremely strong in the middle, no more Aji to work against, dead group. So for a pure entertainment uh, value, I really like that black is being so aggressive. It reminds me of his earlier games against uh, Yi Cheng Ho, for example. I like very, very aggressive Isidol. Lots of fun, lots of fun. I can't wait for his uh, 10 game series. I think those are going to be very interesting to see. We have a game between Lee Cheng Ho and. Yeah, essentially two top Korean 9 Don players. And those of you who watch my uh, bats picks each week that I put them out will recognize this game immediately. So this was one of the crazy games. Oh shoot, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, those of you who recognize my uh, bats picks on a regular basis, you'll recognize this game quite easily. Because this was the game where something unexpected actually occurred. We had white, believe it or not, develop influence fairly, fairly quickly. A nice little wall here in which white obtains influence. So from this game, you would probably expect, maybe, just maybe, that white's the one who is going to be getting the influence, going to be attacking, all that sort of thing. But the question now is how is white going to play and how is black going to play as a result? Because we see black possessing all low stones. Low, 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 low. Only one stone is fourth line or higher. So we would expect a territorial game out of black, an influential game, an influential game out of uh, white. White approach is high. Great. Influence game. We totally get it. Black pincers. White changes direction to use that influence and really hurt that pincering stone. All of this makes perfect sense. Keep separated, pressuring both. We're making a bit of a trade here, so we're going to make this exchange. 
and then get a bunch of stuff for ourselves. That's one of the dangers of having a stone close to a wall like that. Kind of have to be careful. One little change of direction and look how much your opponent can try and take for themselves. So the question is, can that get out? Ooh, that's a tough question. Would you want to try to get that stone out? Black says, okay, I will get the stone out. White says, no, this stone is mine. I will cut your small knight. So Black says, if you're gonna cut my small knight, you've got one too, I'm gonna cut yours. And now we have a very awkward situation that is not seen very often. I mean, what, what is this? What is this? What is this? I have never seen this shape before, I don't think. It does look cool, though. It does look cool. So, alright. Um, options. We can drop down, let the cut occur, ladder to bad places. Um... What what else can we do? We can we can play L sixteen and let J seventeen get killed, I guess. But Yi Cheng Ho is more aggressive nowadays. He decides to attach. He's gonna make his stone stronger and then answer the cut and all will be well. Black says, Okay, yes, this actually happened. This is game. This is really game. All right, so Black says, okay, I'm gonna keep you surrounded. I, I guess uh, gonna Atari. Then we're gonna connect, but it does leave behind a cut point. Okay, cut points left behind. Obviously, White's going to take it. And now Black asks how much you want it. How much do you really wanna play this? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Are you going to let me cut? I mean, this is a really tough game. If you were going to be going over this game on your own, for example, it's great to try to read out and maybe see what you think you would do, but the average person, we're probably not going to get it right. So these kind of games are more directional ideas. I'd be focusing on direction of play, um, basic shapes, things like that, if you can't keep up with all the fighting. All right, so white plays the Atari first, free, why not, strengthens, and then takes. Because we can't let this thing happen, right? If we cut, there's just no way. We can't protect M16 and kill off J16 as white here. But my magical M17 move, I'm sorry, your M17 move? You wanna do this? Is this what you wanted to do there, Dracula? Hmm. Okay, okay. I, I see what you want to do there. My only problem with this would be if we connect, we've got to do this, and if that's pins if that's poked at, then we have to connect, and then we can get really, really, really in trouble here. So I think this guy I think this goes badly. Unless we ignore the poke. But then that's really bad as well. Unless we ignore the poke and Atari and that's just no. That's just no. That's... So I like your idea. 
but simplicity rules out their Theracula. So he goes here, so I'm going to surround you. Black says, hey, I had the same idea to you, buddy. Connects and escapes. Tries to keep him a little unsettled. And so far, the game is kind of proceeding as we expected. This influence is really, really t uh, hammering down on Black's group, right? So this is what we expected to have happen. Black comes out. White's getting some more influence. Finish off from being completely surrounded. Hanes connects because there's so much horrible, horrible Aji here. Can't push out or do a thing like M9, have to connect solidly. White plays the Hane. Again, unsurprising, because if we do a thing like this, we can kind of begin to ask ourselves, where's all of, uh, you know, black's eye or white's eyes, and we just don't find them, right? So we can't play this way. It starts to get uh, a little bit iffy. Poke threatens the cut of two different things. White connects, so black goes into the possible co. White says no co. I guess white is really me in disguise. It's like, I can't win that. That's what I always say, and it's always true, even against my students. Do you have any idea how depressing it is to lose co to seven cues that you're supposed to be teaching? This is. It's, it's, it's a very odd situation. It's like, yes, I can totally win here. This will be a great teaching game if I knew how to play a co. Alas, we don't, so whatever. All right, so white probably doesn't play that, but I would. No, okay, screw that. What happens? Ah, uh, yes, okay. Black Atari, white threatens to cut through and kill off black stones. Yes, that is much better than everything that I was going to do. Yes, Teracula. It's consistency, okay? I ruined one tree, I have to ruin the other, ruin the other or it's going to get jealous. So we had to do this. That's just the way it goes. Alright, so... Here we see an interesting thing. White is trying to kill off this group, right? Black says, I connect. White says, no, you don't. Black says, yes, I do. White says, maybe you're right. Black threatens to cut out. White says, no. Black extends. Getting a little bit iffy here. Threatening to punch through again. Those three stones are not happy. We turn rather than take, because the wraparound is huge. Which means we get to play here. Again, huge move, because the top's threatening to be killed. So we have to go back and prevent that Atari. Which allows black to net. Now who's the one with the territory and the influence? Because it seems to me that this has just gone over to black.
uh, for influence. And expansion on that influence is easy to see. And the one with the territory, the one with the solid points, is kind of white now. He's made that into solid territory. Black picked up a few points for himself, but has a lot of uh, influence over here now. So this was a very unexpected game for me. It just completely flipped. Poke, 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 poke. Take. Gonna threaten. Doesn't work, can't connect. Gonna threaten. Chooses to live. Asks if he can live as well, that'd be swell. White says no. Black says, can I kill you? White says, I would, I would not like you to do that. But Black says, I really want to see you die. White says, I, I, I agree. Apparently, you really would. So... Now we have an interesting co on our hands. And this co is what? This co is a complete picnic. What doesn't care about these stones anymore? He has more than enough out in the middle. He doesn't care. Kill him off. The worst that happens is white resigns. So black's like, okay. We got a co. I'm gonna turn here. Are you going to ignore this? Because if you ignore it, we know the jump is coming immediately, and that's insane amounts of profit. So he can't respond to this. He actually has to invade. He has to. It's kill it or die. Which, fundamentally, I want to point something out here, fundamentally, because this game I picked for more than just the reasons I mentioned in my bats picks. If we know Li Cheng Ho, if we studied his past games, right, we know he was famous for giving his opponents exactly what he wanted and winning anyway. So here, what do we see? We see White says what he wants. He wants the top. Okay, great. White has made a decision. He has said to Black, I would like this area for myself, if you so, if you would be so kind. And here, we see that Black has essentially ensured he can take exactly what he wanted to take. But if he does so, he's going to lose anyway. That... That that was kind of interest. That was amazing to me. I found that really funny, and kind of sad for Li Cheng Ho, but really funny. This is just amazing play from Park. So okay, and I'll I'll have to definitely go over some of uh, Li Cheng Ho's older games where you do see him pull that kind of thing off against his opponent, so you can uh, more appreciate it. But all right. Black says, I'm going to just not let that stone settle, because if it doesn't settle, then guess who has infinite co-threats? Alright, guess we're going to go over top. And just take the corner. Threaten to cut, black remains strong. Let's see, how much does he actually want to go over? Hmm, where's a good stopping point? Alright, I think there's a good stopping point. We'll do a few more moves. Just to start the situation. 
All right, so black is nice and strong. White is reducing this huge area. Black gets to uh, get a nice forcing move, save his stone, keep connected. White says, I capture you. Black says, no, you don't. Gets himself some nice shape because, let's face it, he needs some shape. Now, immediately, we're going to drop what we're doing because this area is kind of growing again. And we do have a bit of a weak group with this stone not being 100% alive yet. So one thing we want to do is make certain that we've got presence here before we're attacked again or whatever. So he invades. Of course, he gets pincered. But he can make himself a little bit of a base here. Very, very low, but he can make himself a base. Incredibly low, but he does get himself a base. And you can see again, by White going for like all of this influence, he does kind of have that idea in the back of his head, like, well, if I get the influence with the weak group in the middle, this might be good for me. So now they're trying to see just like how much each other can get from this. So, all right. We can see where that's going. The idea for Li Cheng Ho still being carried out. That's not the game at all. How did I mess that one up? Oh, turn. There we go. And then back off. Sweet. And so from here, White's kind of in this position where it's not like he doesn't look like he's getting enough uh, for his investment. I mean, he lost the corner, he's getting the influence, but is it really enough? Is it really enough? Hmm. Hmm. White attaches. Black th white threatens to, or black attaches. White threatens to cut off and kill everything, with the hope that the bottom is still not quite completely alive yet. Unfortunately, it is. It's going to be completely fine. A little bit too tenuous a hope there uh, for Yi Cheng Ho. But a good game nonetheless. Uh, primarily, I just wanted to go over it because of that little thing there. The reason why I picked it for Bats Picks this week was because of that. Very rarely do we still see interesting exchanges like this. That, like, on a fundamental level, like where your opponent says, I want something. And then through the game, you can find a way to have them defend that thing they want and still get a great result out of it. It's like, okay, you can have this, but I'm going to try to get more. And you see that every time, everywhere. You see it absolutely everywhere. I mean, something even as basic, right, as the uh, low Chinese Fuseki. So occasionally, we will see approaches on the outside, like uh, black wants the right hand side. Fine. You have that. Let this headache go away, and I'm just going to develop the bottom. That's an idea. Occasionally, when we need to expand our frameworks, we see that idea as well. Like maybe against a Kobayashi. No, actually, better yet, let's do this. Let's do it this way. This will be even cooler. Um, not sure how it's going to be cool, but whatever. Maybe something against the Kobayashi. You might wind up later trying to give your opponent exactly what he wants in exchange for more influence because maybe you've got your own little framework over here that can be built on top of. I mean, it's a very basic idea, right? Uh, yikes. It's a very basic idea, but we don't usually see it on such a wide uh, scale like this. So that was really cool. I thought that was really cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's lecture.